Good morning, church, and welcome to this Sunday, the day of Sabbath rest. Today we come together and worship the Lord of the Sabbath, Jesus Christ, who came to set us free. Shall we join together in inviting each other into this holy time of worship with the call to worship? The Pharisees asked Jesus, why are you doing that, breaking a Sabbath rule? Jesus said, the Son of Man is no slave to the Sabbath. He's in charge. Jesus asked the religious leaders, what kind of action suits the Sabbath best, doing good or doing evil? helping people, or leaving them helpless. Then he brought healing. Help us this day to rethink the power of Sabbath in our lives. And send us forth to live as those who honor God. Let us honor God and God's name this morning as we sing together. His name is wonderful. Thank mm -hmm. you.
friends, will you join me in an attitude of prayer? Most awesome and gracious God, your name is wonderful at all times and at all places. And so, Lord, as we bring our whole hearts, our whole selves before you this morning, Lord, let us remember that whatever circumstances we may face, that you and your name are wonderful. Lord, help us lean into this truth this morning. Help us to glorify your name as your children, and then send us forth, precious Lord, to declare your praises. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. We're talking about the Sabbath today. One of the Ten Commandments tells us to take a break on the Sabbath, to set that apart to be a day to worship the Lord. And yet it seems like so much else can crowd into that special time with us and our Lord. So let us confess before God times that we have not honored the Sabbath and made it holy as we come together and pray the prayer of confession. And we pray saying, Lord Jesus, we confess that we too have a tendency to make the Sabbath as a day with a bunch of rules. Or we decide not to celebrate the Sabbath at all, going about our own ways. Speak to our hearts about what it means that you and you alone are Lord of the Sabbath. Make us people who seek to do good, not just on this day, but always to honor you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I invite you to hear the good news that in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Praise be to God. Amen. Friends, let us affirm our faith as the children of God this morning with the Apostles' Creed. And we join together in proclaiming, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, our psalm for this morning is selected verses from Psalm 62, which starts out talking about how our soul waits for the Lord. Friends, we are all waiting for something. Let us meditate on what that may be and hand it over to the Lord this morning as we hear these words of prayer. For God alone, my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. 
I will not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock. My refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances, they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in exhortation and set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your hope on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God. And steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay to all according to their work. Amen and amen. As we come together for our children's time this morning, I remind us that we are all children of God, and so this is a message for all of us. But I have a question, especially for the kids this morning. Would you want to go to school seven days a week? I know we go to school Monday through Friday, but what if we tacked on Saturday and Sunday? Would you like that very much? I bet you for a lot of us the answer is no. We wouldn't like it if we had to go to school every single day and then come home from school and do homework. There wouldn't be much time to play, would there? There wouldn't be a whole lot of time to spend with our families. And so adults, now I have a question for you. Would you like it if you worked seven days a week? God knew that we needed space Space to play, no matter what age we may be. Space to worship God. Space to delight in the goodness of God. And so God gave a special day called the Sabbath. Now our Jewish brothers and sisters celebrate the Sabbath from sundown on Friday through Saturday. What day do we celebrate the Sabbath on? Sunday, right? We celebrate it on Sunday, today, a day of rest, a day that's set apart for us to put our whole heart, our whole attention on God. That doesn't mean we ignore God the rest of the week, but this is a special day that God has created for us to find our purpose and our hope in him. Now, a lot of things will try to crowd in on this day. And we need to decide what is the best way for us to honor God. What's the best way for us to celebrate the Sabbath? What's the best way for us to be a people of rest and a people of worship? Let's pray. God, we thank you that... You knew us before you even created us, and you knew, oh God, we needed space to rest, space to just spend time with you and those that we love. So Lord, we thank you for this gift, this special day of the Sabbath, and we ask, oh God, that you remind us how we can lean into you and your love on this day. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Friends, we are continuing on in the Gospel of Luke this day, and we're going to be in chapter 6. If you'd like to follow along in your favorite version of the Bible, Luke chapter 6, and I'm going to start right in verse 1. Now, if you don't want to follow along, that's absolutely fine. But whether you're reading the words or listening, I'd ask that you open up your hearts this day to the word of God. Luke chapter 6. 
One Sabbath, while Jesus was going through the grain fields, his disciples plucked some of the heads of grain, rubbed them in their hands, and ate them. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what isn't lawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and took and ate the bread of the presence, which was not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The son of the man is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught, and there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would cure on the Sabbath so that they might find an accusation against him. Even though he knew what they were thinking, he said to the man who was with the withered hand, Come and stand here. And he got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save a life or to destroy it? After looking around at all of them, he said to him, stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was restored. But they were filled with fury and discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus. Now, during those days, he went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when day came, he called the disciples and chose twelve of them, whom he also named apostles. Simon, who he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James and John, and Philip and Bartholomew, and Matthew and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Let us pray. Most good and gracious God, you have given us many gifts. The gift of your word, the gift of worship, the gift of the Sabbath. And yet, O oh Lord, sometimes we turn away from your word. Sometimes we do not let it sink into our hearts. Sometimes we don't praise you, O oh God, in worship. And sometimes, O oh God, we ignore the gift of the Sabbath. Let us, O oh Lord, reclaim all three this day as we bring our hearts before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I, as a pastor, have taught about the commandments many, many times. In fact, I've taught everyone from children as small as three to the oldest of adults about the Ten Commandments, and often the teaching goes something like this. Folk will sit there with some sort of checklist in their mind and say, okay, I don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, I must be good to go. Until we get to commandment number four. And then people often fall silent. For this is the commandment from God that tells us to honor the Sabbath and keep it holy. Sabbath is such a hard concept for us to grasp in this world, brothers and sisters. And especially nowadays when we seem to always be on and always be available. I remember when I was first starting out as a pastor in my first part-time appointment, and I wanted to be as transparent with folk as possible. And so, on Fridays, people would receive a reply to whatever email they sent me that said that I was celebrating the Sabbath, but I would reply to them first thing in the morning on Saturday. And some folks didn't take that very well. 
Because when we email, we want a reply. When we send a text or have a phone call, we want people to answer. We want people to be immediately within our reach. And so in this world of immediacy, this world of the constant hustle and hurry of being available, God has truly given us a gift, my friends. The gift of Sabbath. A time to delight. A time to rejoice in God. A time to savor life to its fullest. To time to be reminded that our worth doesn't lie in what we produce or what others say about us, but simply in the fact that we are a child of God. We here and now today, even though our world may be a bit different from biblical times, aren't the only ones who need that gift of Sabbath. We hear about the Sabbath all throughout both the Old and New Testament. People in Jesus' time needed this day, this time of rest as well. It's scriptural. It traces its roots back to Exodus, where God says, Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you will labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, not your sons and your daughters, your male or female slaves, your livestock, or the alien resident in your town. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in it, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Unless the people thought that, oh, well, we can ignore that. The same thing gets repeated in Deuteronomy. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but your seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. The Sabbath is a gift, my friends. And that is a gift that pointed our brothers and sisters of Israel back to Egypt. To the fact that God had set them free. To the fact that God had rescued them from a time of slavery. A time when there was no rest. No delight. Where their worth was tied to how fast they could produce for Pharaoh alone. But over time, the Pharisees, even though they knew the story, even though they knew the commands, even though they knew that they had been set free, they started to add bit by bit and piece by piece to this commandment. A generous reading would say that they were trying to add some boundaries to what was and wasn't allowed on the Sabbath to help aid people in celebrating it to its fullest. But as a result, even if it wasn't their intention, the delight started to slip out of Sabbath. It became a lot more about rules than about honoring God. Enter Jesus. In today's scripture in the Gospel of Luke, we find Jesus and he and his disciples are going through a grain field and they're getting a little bit hungry so they start to pick off some of the heads of grain and, and roll them together so they can eat them more easily. And the Pharisees are not happy about it. In modern times, we could think about this like going to the grocery store and cooking a big meal. It wasn't allowed on the Sabbath in the eyes of the Pharisee. To which Jesus called to mind and spoke the words of the story of David from 1 Samuel. Now David, as a, a leader of the Israelite people and as the armies, once found himself in a situation where he and his uh, companions were hungry and they needed some bread and there was nothing to eat. 
So David did all that he could do, and he went in and ate the bread of the presence, this really holy piece of bread that was set apart for those that tended the temple. He broke the law, and then he shared it with others. Jesus called it out. David, the very king of Israel, the one who was close to God's own heart, had broken the law. But instead of asking the Pharisees what they thought about that or asking them to speak ill against David, he simply let the story speak on its own with this one addition. The Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. Jesus was unique, my friends, in his understanding of what the Sabbath meant because he was Lord of the Sabbath, the Messiah even if no one else could recognize it. He came not to make the word of God hard for us or to make the celebration of the Sabbath a burden, but instead open up our hearts to sink in to what it means to be part of the kingdom of heaven. In other words, the Pharisees were getting bogged down in the details but Jesus is trying to point them to the bigger picture, the ultimate picture, the purpose and heart of Sabbath in the first place. But in case they happen to miss the point of what Jesus was saying, he got another opportunity to put it into practice not too much longer later. There was a man who had a withered hand, and he wasn't able to work with it. And he found himself in the temple on one Sabbath day, and the Pharisees have an eye to Jesus. They see him looking at this man, and they think he must be leaning towards healing him. And apparently, healing wasn't allowed on the Sabbath. They wanted to catch him in a misstep. But Jesus, being the Messiah, knew exactly what they were thinking in their hearts and so before he act, he asks them a question. Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath? To save a life or to destroy it? What a reversal. The Pharisees saw this man as a, a means to an end, as someone they could use to trap Jesus. But to Jesus... This man was a child of God. Why did it matter what day he would seek healing for a child of God? Because the Sabbath is a day for doing good and not to make the harm done to this man go on simply for the sake of human rules. Of course, the religious leaders weren't very happy with that at all. It's because, my friends, the overarching spirit of the Sabbath had started to slip away in their hearts. They got caught up in the details instead of in the spirit of what it means to be people who worship God. Did it honor God more to let this child of God continue to suffer even one more day just so that a law wouldn't be violated? Or was it better to bring him healing that honored and glorified God right here and right now? I've been wondering what it means for us to ponder a similar question. What does it look like for us here and now today in the midst of our world to bring honor and blessing to God through the Sabbath? I'll have to admit, I've never really understood the argument that everything should be closed on Sunday so that folks should be in church, because I grew up in a family where that simply couldn't be a reality. My grandma was a nurse. <laughs> she had to work Sundays. My mom was a pharmacist who worked Sundays so that people could get the medication that they so desperately needed. So that argument that everything should be closed so everyone came to church just wasn't part of how I grew up. 
But I think a better frame of thinking would be this. What am I doing this day to honor God? How am I taking this Sabbath day to delight in God's goodness? How am I using it to share the love of God with others? And sometimes that means being open to what God drops right in our path. Many of you are aware that I prepared for renewal leave, which I took this past July for well over a year. I had a plan. I had deposits placed on retreat centers where I was intending to go to pray. Then COVID happened. And everything that I had planned had to change. But what opened up instead was an invitation to delight in God, to love and be loved, to play and to rejoice. And that was exactly the invitation that I needed and a true gift that I treasure to this day. Sabbath, my friends, is an opportunity to remember who we are at our deepest core, to remember that we aren't what the world says, but that we are children of God. And because of that, we honor our God, who loves us more than any other. So I ask you again, not what rules you think you need to, to keep the Sabbath in place, but instead, what are you doing this Sabbath day that honors God? And how has that changed for you over the years? Because if it's just about rules, we're going to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again for fear of breaking the rule. But if Sabbath is about spending time with God, things may change in our hearts and lives and circumstances from time to time as we are drawn deeper into connection with our loving God. And so I invite you this week to think, to ponder, to pray around how you are being called at this time to honor the Sabbath and keep it holy, and how that invites you to live with the boldness and grace and love of God the other six days of the week. Amen, my friends. Friends, as we come together for this time of prayer this day, I have some prayer requests to share with you, and I'm sure that you have some to share with one another as well. A reminder that you can do that if you're on the Facebook Live by using the chat so you can share it immediately and folk can be praying for you. You can also use the Google form that you'll find on our Facebook site, and we send those requests if you give us permission out on Monday morning so others can join you in praying for your request. Friends, I'd ask you this day to continue to hold in prayer Mary and Joan as they recover from their recent hospitalizations. And I'd ask you to pray for the families of Anna Boffman, Kitty Eunick, Ruth Phillips, that would be Donna Vox's mom, and for Ron Bodle, my grandfather, who passed away this week. Friends, let us come together in an attitude of prayer. Most awesome and gracious God, we are sorry for the times that we have made our Sabbath days more about boundaries and rules instead of delighting in you instead of chasing after your spirit and being fed by your word. We are sorry, God, for the times that we've made our prayers something that we rush into instead of seeing it as time spent with you. Lord, as we enter into this time of prayer on this Sabbath day, help us regain our connection with you. Help us, O oh Lord, to reclaim what it means to be your children as you whisper again into our ears that we are your beloved. Lord, we grieve this day with so many in this parish who are hurting, 
for folk who have lost loved ones. We rejoice, O oh God, with those who are home from the hospital and are recovering. We ask, O oh God, your mercy upon those who continue to be ill and need your healing hand to rest upon them. We ask, O oh Lord, a hedge of protection around all who are working tirelessly this day, O oh God, to be people who proclaim your goodness and truth, not just in this place or this time of worship, God, but in the way that they live their lives, in hospitals and doctor's offices, in pharmacies and places, O oh God, where we go when we are in need of your healing touch. And so, Lord Jesus, we thank you this day. We thank you for the folk that you put upon our path who help take care of us, and we thank you ultimately, O oh God, for your invitation to rest. Not just any rest, but holy rest. May we sink into your arms of mercy this day as we come together as your people and pray, saying, our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, your will, will be done, done. on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give yes, us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, into temptation but, but deliver us from evil. evil. For yours is the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the, and the glory, glory forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, as we now turn to a time of offering, we don't just offer our gifts, we offer our whole selves to God. So as Ed plays something for us to reflect upon, I invite you to take this time for whatever you may need this day. If you need it to be a time of prayer, let it be so. If it's a time for you to prepare your offering like you would on Sunday morning, that's okay as well. If it's a time to just sit in silence and let the music wash over you, may it be a gift. My friends, let us come and offer ourselves totally and fully before our Lord. Friends, let us join together in praying the communal offertory prayer. As we say, God of creation, you have gifted us with the richness of this world and called us to be stewards over it. Let us live in such a way that we bless others as you have blessed us. Amen. Amen. 
Shall we join together in our closing hymn, I Need Thee Every Hour. sent out as people who cling to God every hour of every day and proclaim the promise of rest and delight as a gift of this Sabbath, I have some announcements for us. First, as a reminder, this afternoon at 4 p.m., we'll be having our charge conference very briefly with our district superintendent, Brenda Leji, that will be held in the Sanctuary of Grace, and as a reminder, mask and social distancing are required. 
Grace is preparing for its annual audit, and this year we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. So for those of you that have checkbooks, I would ask that you drop them off sometime at the church. If you have a key, you can let yourself in. We're collecting them near the mailboxes. You'll actually see a post-it note that I have that says checkbooks here. And if you don't have a key, know that you can come Monday or Tuesday and ring the doorbell between 9.30 and 4, and the secretary, Kathy, will let you in. For those of you that are on the auditing team, that as well will be different this year, and I will be sending out directions about that later on this week. And now, friends, I send us forth hearing again these words of Jesus. And Jesus said to them, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. So friends, let us go out and honor our Lord this day. Not just through this time of worship where we have lifted up his name, but by the way that we live our lives. May we remember that he is Lord. Amen and amen.